Donald Trump is very clear that when he sends troops abroad, he wants to be paid for it as if it's some sort of product that he manufactures. That was made as clear as it's ever been in a recent interview. We're sending more to Saudi Arabia and Saudi Arabia is paying us for it. You know, we're doing something that nobody's ever done. I said to Saudi Arabia, we have a very good relationship with Saudi Arabia. I said, listen, you're a very rich country. You want more troops? I'm gonna send them to you, but you've gotta pay us. They're paying us. They've already deposited $1 billion in the bank. We are going to help them. But these rich countries have to pay for it. South Korea gave us $500 million. They never gave us it. They gave us $500 million. I said, you got to help us along. We have 32,000 soldiers in South Korea protecting you from North Korea. You've got to pay. And they gave us $500 million. That is sick, that's all it is. Every right thinking human being should watch that and think this person should not be allowed any control, let alone supreme unilateral control over what happens to US soldiers. And the weird myth that nobody really wants to bring up, they keep saying, like implying that Donald Trump, he supports the troops and they support him. Even though when you look at polls, like more than 50% of American service members don't support Donald Trump. His approval rating among soldiers is very low. And honestly, is that surprising at all? If you were a soldier, let alone a soldier perhaps serving in the Middle East right now, if you saw that interview, what would you think of Donald Trump? What would you think of your commander in chief? That he views you as like a product like any other, like one of his condos or a candy bar or a video game. Yeah, if you want this, we'll give it to you, but you gotta pay us. We'll send soldiers to Saudi Arabia to protect Saudi Arabia if we get paid. Does any American support that? Does anyone actively serving in the US Armed Forces support that? Is that what we think our military should be used for? Nobody supports that. And that is why Donald Trump on this issue is so weak, even though the media goes out of their way to protect him by ignoring these sorts of issues, by pretending that he has a soldier's back. It's infuriating, it's maddening. And look, what I wish I could say is that this is one major thing that we should focus on in this election, that it should be about the future of the American military, our funding priorities, where it's deployed effectively. A, a, a referendum on American empire. I wish that we could have that. I don't think that we're gonna have that. I don't think that almost anyone is seriously talking about about anything wider than one particular blow up. Like the situation with Iran that developed over the course of the past two weeks. There was a lot of media coverage of it, but not of its implications, not of placing it in a context, either in terms of the current state of American involvement in international conflicts, let alone in the historical context of how we have deployed our military in the past. What I wish we could have was a serious, long conversation as a nation about what our soldiers are doing abroad, where they're deployed. Why is it that we have bases in over 100 countries? Does anyone even acknowledge that, let alone understand why that needs to be the case? Why are we spending countless hundreds of billions of dollars every single year? What, so that we can make a profit off of Saudi Arabia? If they want to respond with that, then let's have them have that conversation. I honestly wish that we could have like let's have a, a, a joint commission, Senate and House, and let's have the Joint Chiefs, let's have the head, the, the, the Mark Esper on the Capitol, and let's go through every base. Let's go through every conflict we're involved in. Let's have an actual dissection of what our military is doing to justify the amazing amount of money that we spend on it every single year. Especially at a time where we're talking about how we can't afford any of our domestic priorities. If we want to do that, if we wanna be involved in Germany and South Korea and Saudi Arabia and the UAE and Yemen and all of these places, let's have them make the case and let's have the American people actually judge once and for all. Is this what we want or is this what we've ended up with and we've tolerated? I wanna have that conversation, I don't think we're going to. And at a time where hypothetically between now and the general election, we could still end up in a shooting war with Iran, we desperately need to have this conversation. But we won't, even when Donald Trump tees it up for us with comments about pillaging the natural resources of other countries, about selling American soldiers as if they're mercenaries, they're not mercenaries. No American wants that, but no American gets to be even be involved in this conversation, unfortunately.
For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.